Hey everyone, this is question eight from the 10 ready practice test in geometry. Uh, triangles QTP and STP are shown, so I'm dealing with this. And this. These are the bigger ones that they're talking about. Is that there? All right, um, MR is perpendicular bisector. Now the big deal here is the fact that it's a bisector. The perpendicular part's fine, but the bisector means it breaks P and T into equal parts. At, so PM is equal to MT is essentially what you need to know. The distance here is the same as the distance here. That's the lay of the land. Uh, which transformation would indicate that triangle QTP is congruent to? This symbol means congruent, means they're the same. They have the same values um, all the way through. I mean, if it was just this, that would be similar. That would be, uh, they would have the same angles, but proportional sides. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about full congruence. In order to prove full congruence by doing a transformation, you have to do what's called a rigid motion, which is to say that you move the entire figure and it becomes essentially laid on top of itself. So if I'm going to prove that QPT is equivalent to STP, I need to find a way to get this figure here, I essentially want to know what do I have to do to lay this directly on top of this? Like, can I pick up this, you know, flip it around and lay it right on top so it looks exactly like it? So I need to look. Horizontal translation. Now, horizontal translation means I don't turn it, I don't flip it around, I just keep it in the same order that it's in now, and it goes the distance from P to R. Essentially, it would move it up to here. because I would start here and just move this this way. That's not going to help, so that's out. Uh, a horizontal translation, the length PT. So I have this, and I move it on over here, so this becomes the new P. So I have this, this, and this. Again, it's not. Unless the shapes are the same orientation, like facing the same direction they look alike, a translation is not going to get you there. So the translation things are totally out. Now reflections I can get. Now remember, a reflection in a way is sort of like folding a piece of paper. So is there a line that I can fold a piece of paper on and then I could lay this one essentially on top. Q lays on top of S, P lays on top of T, that sort of thing. Um, if I go QT, so this line here, this would fold down to right here this would fold sort of up here. I'm trying to think from this line to get there, fold up here. This one would fold up here. Um, not really. I mean, it's just not not working out the way that I dreamed it would. That's not helpful. That doesn't get me anywhere. So going over this line doesn't work because if you imagine if you fold this piece right here, the S is going to be, I said it was down here, but it's more likely down here. It just doesn't work. On the flip side of that, if I look at a reflection over MR, so right here, a reflection means that I go to the point of reflection in that same distance by. Well, if they told me that PM and MT are the same, I go here, I get here. R would stay exactly the same, so that's looking good. And Q would go to here and then go all the way over to here. So it would literally, and then the T would go over here, and the S would go over here. But if I'm just working, worrying about QTP and what it's going to do, this is going to go over here and do this. This is going to go over here and do this. And this is going to come over here and do this. And look, my new fancy triangle is the one that's already in place on the other side. So my reflection over MR is the correct answer to number eight. There you go.